In this lesson, we are going to talk about the two major laws of thermodynamics. The first one is the law of conservation of energy. And we remember that the law of conservation of matter basically stated that matter is neither created nor destroyed. In this case, we have energy. So energy and matter function very similarly. So based on this law, energy is neither created nor destroyed, just like matter. What does that tell you? Think of the title, conservation. That tells you it is conserved, it stays the same. So the total energy is always conserved. Now if we look at the changes in energy, which is right here, delta. So this is the delta symbol, we represent changes, okay? And the change in E is, which is energy, is always equal to Q, and we know that Q is equal to heat. But what is pressure time? The change in volume. Now, if we look at this very closely, what a common example like this. Look at this balloon right here, right? Look what happened when I apply the volume. Here you have gas molecules in this balloon. But look at the pressure. In this balloon, it has pressure, specific pressure. But what happened when I try to change the volume? What do I need to do it? And can you feel it? That work is being applied, or energy is being applied to change the volume. So in a way, part of energy is a change in volume at a specific pressure. So the same thing on this concept in here, if I were to have a flash card or something as simple as a note card. Okay, how about this? A napkin for you. Look what happened when I released the balloon. See that? Look what happened to the napkin. It just fly off, right? So that tells you that there are energy being escaped or being used or being happened at that particular moment. So this whole entire thing is also known as work. Okay? The air or the volume changes in here cause things to happen to this napkin. Work is being done onto this napkin, okay? So changes in energy can be expressed in terms of heat and work is directly related to pressure time to change in volume. Then we have the second law of thermodynamics. Basically, this law focuses on this one term, that is disorder. And another word for disorder is entropy. Based on the second law of thermodynamics, it is saying that the disorder in our universe, the chaos, okay, or in another term, the entropy in our universe will always increase over time. So it become disorder over time, no matter what. So let's talk about this law, specifically in terms of entropy. Now entropy is basically represented by the letter S, okay. So entropy is the measurement of this order, and sometimes they define as dispersal. So how spread it is, okay? So again, entropy is disorder. Here are the common pattern among, and here are the common pattern that relate to entropy. How can we look at a substance and determine the entropy of that substance? Here's a pattern. The entropy will always increase when gases occupy a greater volume. That's where the word dispersal means. And how well is dispersed, okay? So, of course, gas occupy greater volume will have greater entropy, okay? And then we have the entropy of gases are larger with greater than liquid. Of course, we realize gas has more kinetic energy. It's more disordered, isn't it, than liquid. And if we compare liquid to solid, of course the entropy of liquid is more disordered than solid. Then we also have the entropies compared in terms of temperature. Of course the entropy of substance at high temperature will be greater than thing of kinetic energy is more disordered when it's vibrate faster. Then we look at the complexity of a molecules. The larger the molecules, the more interaction of electron. So therefore, it would have greater entropies if you have more complex molecules. Okay, in case when we assume they have the same number of moles and they are in the same phase. 
Lastly, we need to realize the entropy of all substance is positive because the only time that we have perfect substance that has zero disorder is when there is absolutely no kinetic energy and that is the only stage where we have absolute zero or zero Kelvin. But that's not realistic. We don't live in zero Kelvin, okay? So in that case, that tells you that all substance in your daily life and my daily life would have a positive entropy. So how is that applied to a concept of chemical reaction? Because we can have, because chemical reaction is relative from the reactant to the product, right? Because all reaction happen from reactant and those reactant will produce the product. Which are two separate substance. Because of that, we can actually calculate the changes in entropy of a chemical reaction. So here I have a list. Our job here is to determine if the changes in entropy is positive or negative. Based on the changes, it is relative from, what is it? When we see delta is always final, minus what? Initial. And if we think in terms of chemical reaction, the final is always your product isn't it? And your initial will always your reactant, that's your starting substance. So keep that in mind. Now let's try this problem together. Here I have water in a gaseous phase versus in the product water at the liquid phase. Of course this would be at the higher entropy. This would be lower. But if we use this equation product minus reactant we have a smaller number minus a higher number, what would we get? Of course, it's going to be a negative number. Just if I take 3 minus 5, what do I get? I have a negative 2. Isn't that easy? Then let's try another problem. Here I have a solid at the reactant. Comparing to a liquid and a gas, this would be a higher entropy. Not only that, it had more substances. But look at this, it had gas and liquid. Where here we would have lower entropy. So when you take a higher number, product minus reactant, what would you get? Of course, a positive number. Just like in this case, I take 5 minus 3, that gave me a positive 2. Isn't that right? Let's try another problem. Here I have gases, and here we have 2 moles and 1 mole. That gives us 3 moles of gas. Where here we have a large molecules, okay. Then we have liquid. Here we have aqueous and liquid. Think about it. There's a reason why I put this in order because they are the order that we look at. So gas and the number of molecules take priority. Okay. So in this case we have gases and there are three. So I would assume that this is a higher entropy. When this one, liquid and aqueous, we have very lower entropy because they both look at this one. Even though it's a large molecule, but this side has least number of or less number of moles but it just have that big molecule that's all it is so we have a low minus the high just like that case a smaller number minus a high number will give us a negative change in entropy then here we have a solid and then go into a aqueous now think of aqueous okay aqueous is being dissolved in water so therefore, you see this aqueous molecules will be dispersed more. So that tells you that this, of course, will have higher entropy. This will have lower entropy. So it's high minus low. A small high number minus smaller number. Of course, that gave us a positive change of entropy. Then here we got copper relate in terms of temperature. This is at 100, where this is 25. Of course, this side is going to be higher when this side is going to be lower. So we have a low number minus a high number. Okay, what does that tell you? Low minus high, just like that case, give us a negative entropy. And here's the last one. We have two gas molecules, NH3, and then we have over here gas molecules, and we have another gas molecule, but this one has a coefficient of three. So this one's four of them total. I would assume, even though this has a larger molecule, but this one has a lot more molecules or moles, so I would assume that this would be 
at high entropy, okay? Because we have two different substances and they have a lot more. It's all about perspective wise. Compared to this one, even though this molecule is larger, but it only has two mole. So, of course, the disorder here will be greater than, so this is lower. So we have high minus low give us a positive number. So we have positive change of entropy. And that's all it is. We compare entropy is all about relative. What happened to the entropy? Is it decreasing or is it increasing? In this case, you can tell that the entropy is decreasing. Here it would be increasing because it's going from low to high, where this high to low. And here we have what it says from high to low that will be decreasing, where we have from low to high that would be increasing. This would be decreasing from high to low. And this one would be low to high, so that would be increasing. But that's it. That, that's all we need to know about entropy relative to how much disorder of a substance is.